So I couldn't even really remember that I was looked after by them. I didn't even remember that. It's a good happy feeling a bit overwhelmed because I'm not used to these these memories. It will be a little bit different today. I hope you guys are willing to join me with a nice hot cup of tea and some snuggly pyjamas. Hi puzzles and pieces, it's Jessica from Multiplicity and me, a channel dedicated to ending the stigma of DID, otherwise known as Dissociative Identity Disorder. Okay, firstly, this is not how I wanted to shoot this video. Today, it's more about pajama time and story time along with a cup of tea. I originally did this video and I was all dressed up and I felt really pretty. And then I watched the video back and I was like, oh no, I got it to edit. And the new top that I bought showed far more cleavage than I was anticipating. I just felt this grimace of dread and I was like, oh no. And I know it probably sounds really, really stupid, but I, I hate the thought of being overly sexualized for my body in any way. So I I just like shut down and I, and I initially got kind of triggered and upset and I thought, you know what? No, I'm going to come and do this thingy with my pyjamas on, with no makeup on and a cup of tea. So... That's what you guys are getting today. I hope that's okay. I'm so sorry. So you guys may have noticed that we didn't upload recently and I guess we've had a lot going on. And one of the biggest things is that we hit one of the biggest milestones ever, I guess, for us in our treatment. Like just something that really was like wham. You know, I think a lot of what we've done has kind of been like a slow drip, but this time, we recovered memories. Wow, memories of our childhood that we've never been able to remember. It was amazing. Hello everyone. <laughs> My face is very puffy and red. I've just finished therapy. I have childhood memories for the first time ever, like really positive memories. And uh, they started coming through this week and then speaking through it then I was able to just remember so much and I've never been able to remember anything <laughs> I've got details so I got a towel so I could grab I didn't expect to cry in the thing recovery is not a linear journey and there will be bumps along the way you know I think being in specialist therapy has really changed our lives in so many ways that we just weren't expecting. It's changed our ability to kind of just float through life and you know get on with things, work on communication, work on cooperation. So that is of course until six weeks ago ish, seven weeks, eight weeks. What is time? Until we suddenly had these memories hit us of the first kind of five years of our life, you know kind of the backstory of our life that we had completely forgotten about. And it just seems bizarre now, like, how could I have forgotten that? So within DID treatment, the first step is safety and stabilization. You know, we kind of felt we'd gotten there with all the self-therapy in the world, you know, everything that we've done, we've worked on ourselves for years and years and years. And I guess that we found that we just kind of plateaued. We couldn't really do any more than we were, but we were still having like PTSD effects, just hit us in the face. So that's when we sought out the specialist treatment that we are now to kind of progress through stage two, which is trauma processing. And trauma processing is essentially that. You're processing your trauma, your history overall, I guess. You're trying to kind of rebuild a picture of who you are and what makes you, you. He asked us to make a timeline of our memories. And I remember Jamie actually suggested that we get our medical history because it would kind of help pinpoint maybe our journey or, something would come up that we'd be like oh my gosh I remember that you know but when we got them through we kind of skimmed through them and didn't really feel like touching them again it just didn't feel I don't know I want to say necessary is not the right word but I don't know if we're also avoiding oh my god that's so nice and part of this therapy is putting the puzzle pieces together of who you are and what makes you you and I guess with all of that going on in our head we were kind of thinking it and I just remember seeing this butterfly um, on a really sunny day and then I remembered the butterfly on a really sunny day when I must have been about five years old 
and suddenly my memories came back to me. This butterfly was kind of the catalyst to bring everything back just by seeing it in real life. I've never remembered anything like this in my childhood. I remember the butterflies. It used to have this like awning. There was a side door to like the back garden. Or we could go through the gate, which was like there. And there was this awning that I'm assuming was Buddleia or subs, like some kind of plant that butterflies loved because I just remember them always being there. These butterflies. And I would catch them all the time. And it was like, whoomph. Everything came flooding back in seconds. And so we had this vision of the butterflies and the grapevines and the puddlier, the hydrangea, the, like, and being at my grandparents' house. <laughs> like, I'd forgotten all about them. Like, I knew I had grandparents, obviously. I knew their names, I knew, you know. I had no idea what impact they had on my life to the degree that they had. They'd been looking after me almost every day since I was born. Like, how did I forget that? How did I forget that? When I asked my therapist about it, like, how did we get here? He said that, you know, having a specialist therapist is kind of like you're walking through a corridor with all of these doors and it's up to your therapist to kind of guide you into noticing these doors exist and to even step into them. You know, so simply by kind of tapping, I guess, on that idea of who made you the person you are now and, you know, what was your life like? Think about your timeline. I'm guessing that just kind of opened the doors. So when we saw the visual catalyst of the butterfly, it just set everything free and we were able to finally walk through this door that we hadn't even noticed before. And for the first time, we could see these memories. And when I was having these memories, it was like I suddenly could remember things about them. Like my grandpa was um, a veteran from the war. He was an immigrant that fought for the country, came over here, fell in love with a Welsh woman and got married. I remember his accent. I could suddenly remember sitting on his lap while he was telling me stories of the boogeyman and the boogeyman's son who only wanted to be my friend, you know. <laughs> He's trying to make me not scared of the boogeyman. I'm not quite sure if his stories worked. But this is where it gets even weirder. It wasn't just my memories. Jake could remember going to collect tadpoles down in the pond with him and working in the garden and picking apples from the orchard. Ed could remember sitting on the kitchen table with my gran shaving carrots, ready to make a roast dinner. And... Jamie could remember helping my gran who was diabetic and he would be taking her bloods because he wanted to help. She didn't have much mobility towards the end and he was happy to be a helper in that way. So we all had memories, basically kind of pre-DID of, of this specific household with these moments. And so they all very much feel like me, but a version of me and the guys feel exactly the same. It's them, but a version of them. So, you know, if we go by the theory of structural dissociation, which obviously says that every child is born in parts and we come together over time, we integrate, you know, by the time our personality is fully developed. If trauma happens, it prevents that from happening and you end up with DID. And that was a bizarre perspective, just to have that, like, oh my God, like, it's my memory, but equally it's Jake's, and equally it's Jamie's, and equally it's Ed's. It was just, it was just honestly mind-blowing. We enjoyed helping them and being with them so much, and, you know, we started to remember the memories of them becoming really sick and being told they couldn't look after us anymore, and um, I, I guess that's where the issue started and um, what led to my major trauma at six years old. So uh, having, 
having that memory suddenly was indescribable. I've tested the water telling the story to see how I feel. So I've, I've said this a few times now, you know, I've, I've ran through. So each time I'm getting a little, a, a little bit less kind of overwhelmed and we've had several weeks now to process everything. Um, and I think for us in a way, it felt like a mourning process. It felt like a grieving process because we were having to remember that these people had such a big impact on our lives. And then obviously just kind of remembering that they're not there anymore. It just felt like because we remembered, we were we we had to grieve again. Um, so I think that's also why the last few weeks have been quite difficult for us. And the fact that this kind of came from a point where we were all pre me, we were pre DID. That was the, just the most bizarre notion to me because I remember just coming out of therapy and thinking, "Holy crap! This is what it's like to have DID." I know that may sound bizarre, but I think it was just that validity that suddenly I, I didn't have these memories and suddenly I did, suddenly they were there. And, you know, I guess people may be wondering, well, was it iatrogenic? Did the therapist implant anything? Absolutely not, none. It, it literally just came to me. And I think even I kind of worried about, you know, is there a chance of any false memories? Is there a chance of, you know, kind of being misguided? And I can just say with absolute certainty that no, those are wholeheartedly my memories, my childhood memories that I genuinely didn't think I had. Still a little bit raw. It's still getting used to this idea that I suddenly have childhood memories and it's something that I kind of got used to the fact that I would never recover and I would never remember and I'd gotten complacent with that. Yeah, it was a pretty incredible moment and like I said, just so validating. Oh, like, oh, I have a memory disorder. Cheers. <laughs> so that's the good side and that's the happy side. I'm kind of happy to share. I am both apprehensive and excited to explore that further. Obviously, it's really important that you do get that from somebody who really knows what they're doing um, because the last thing you want to experience is flooding, which is where kind of all the memories just come through all at once because that can really be destabilizing. So it's kind of a good therapist job to kind of help you kind of drop droplet that in bit by bit. So I guess this was just kind of a story time. That's my experience and I just wanted to share that with you guys. If anyone's going through the same, it has to be right for you and nobody can pressure you to do that. Nobody, not a therapist or anyone. This has to be a you decision. And for us, this felt like the right direction to go in. Path is really scary. Um, you know, the fear of the unknown is super high because if this has just come back to us, what else could there be? And I guess in a way it's strange to be healing. Thank you guys for listening to my story. Tonight's tea is Pukka nighttime tea. So hopefully it'll help me doze off and um, lessen my anxiety. Anxiety. So thank you guys for listening to my journey. And I'm so appreciative of all of you guys. Thank you for continuing to support us and just for being here listening to this right now. This is the first time that we've talked about any kind of thing of our history or our past. But equally as well, I want to say to people to please not make any presumptions about somebody's trauma. Um, I think that's been one of the hardest things lately is kind of people making that assumption about what happened to us or what we've been through and, you know, who was involved, etc. But I think that does a lot more harm than good. Even people like expecting this huge trauma and this most horrific, ongoing, lifelong thing when actually, even in my case, my grandparents dying and then not being kind of soothed correctly could have just caused the DID. And they were such important caretakers for the first five years of my life. So, you know, even that is enough to develop DID. And I think people have this really skewed view about how much trauma somebody needs to have in order to have this disorder. So I kind of just wanted to raise that point as well. You know, that wasn't the be all and end all to what happened but i'm just saying that could be enough for someone because our brains are all unique and we're all unique and our responses and windows of tolerance they're all different so on that very important note i'm going to drink the rest of my tea and i wish you guys good night <laughs> okay bye, bye.